everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. I hope that uh, everything is going well on your end. It has been an extremely busy week. Uh, once again, uh, I want to extend my thank, heartfelt thanks and gratitude for those of you who have consistently been sending your well wishes and checking in on uh, me uh, as I move along the process of healing and recuperating uh, from my health scare. I am doing a whole lot better than <laughs> I was initially. Uh, almost 100%, not quite there, but definitely ahead of schedule and doing fine. Um, I'm excited. Um, if you uh, are part of those who have decided to take this journey with me as far as the 60-day holistic health challenge. Uh, we are uh, facilitating uh, the info and the exchange of information primarily on the Master Fitness 21 site. The link, to, uh, not site, but Facebook page, the link to that page is in the description box of this video. You can also email us, uh, email, uh, inbox me. Uh, good morning. I see so far that Kim and John have checked in uh, welcome. Uh, Kim, we need to connect. Uh, I know that, you know, you've been giving me my space to heal and recuperate, but we need to connect uh, ASAP. Uh, with that being said, uh, if you haven't joined the 60 day challenge, now is a chance to do that. Uh, I've actually made room for four people to work one on one with me as a part of this process. Um, no, it's not free. Uh, the 60 day challenge is free. Coming over, sharing your journey, learning from us as we exchange information, all the resources on nutrition and all that as far as links and all that stuff is free. But if you want to up the ante and you wanna invest in yourself and you wanna take a one-on-one -on -one, uh, approach to working with an expert, in a number of different fields. Um, my son and I are making ourselves available for fitness instruction, uh, nutrition. Uh, I'm gonna be working heavily in the areas of life change uh, from a mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual perspective. Uh, also lending my expertise in the way of health on the physical side uh, to the process. And we are welcoming you in to work with us on a level that you are intent on working. Uh, some of you will be suffi uh, sufficed with just simply hanging around and sharing information and riding along. Others are gonna wanna commit all in on making some changes. Uh, I wanna work with you. I'm, I'm just, uh, I have a few spots that I've purposely made available. I wanna work with you in achieving this change. I want you to go along with me on my journey while I take some steps to get to a specific level that I've set. I wanna show you how to get out of your own way, how to get rid of the excuses, how to abandon procrastination, how to set and achieve and accomplish anything that you desire in your life. And we're gonna start with this. So click the links. If you haven't gotten the books, that's in there. If you wanna work with me, the information is in the description box, it's all there. Uh, again, normally I would have come to you already by now, but like I said, it's been crazy busy, still trying to catch up uh, from the time I spent in the hospital, uh, but uh, we're definitely making progress. Okay, here we go. Today is Business Mindset Thursday. I'm not going to be long at all here this morning, but I want to talk to you about the importance and the power of the mind. You know, hey, Doc, why do you spend so much time talking about thoughts? Why do you spend so much time talking about self-talk? Why do you spend so much time? because there's absolutely no problem, absolutely no issue, absolutely no struggle, absolutely no difficulty or situation that's inhibiting you that's not in the mind. It all starts in the mind. Whether it's success or failure, it starts in the mind. Whether you are going to be a victim or a conqueror starts in the mind. Whether you're going to rise to meet every challenge a fold at the first sign of pressure is all in the mind. It's how you work with your mind. Uh, you've heard me talk many times before about the importance of 
uh, collaboration between one another because we are social creatures. We are mammals by nature. We were meant to collaborate to get the optimal uh, uh, results for anything that we're aspiring to do. However, we live in a world that celebrates and praises individualism and, and pr promotes individualism. So we spend a lot of time trying to operate and serve self and uh, present self as being. We are egotistical now. We are more and more concerned about saying I did it by myself than saying I accomplished great things. Uh, I'd rather do something mediocre by myself than to do something great with four or five other people. And that has to change. Collaboration is immensely important. I was talking with a client yesterday and he and I was sharing the importance of being able to pick up your phone and be able to look in your phone and find the person you need to get the thing you need done. And you should be that person for other people in their phone. If you've got a phone full of people and none of those people you can pick up and call when there's something going on in a specific area, you don't have friends, you have acquaintances. And these acquaintances aren't even uh, adequate assets. They don't hold the, uh, they don't hold or they don't have the value that's requisite to hold a space and spot in your life. It's not about using people. It's about being mutually beneficial in your relationships. If your relationships are one sided and all you're doing is serving, that's not that's not working for you. If you let if it's the other way around, all you do is taking. That's not good for anyone. But it's even worse when it's dead. It's just there. We're just taking up space with one another. There's a need for collaboration. How are you collaborating with the people in your inner circle? Who, who are the people in your immediate periphery? And how are you collaborating with them? What are you doing that is helping both of you be better people? And if there's no mutual collaboration that's creating this space in which you are becoming better in one way or another, then it, I'll give you a prime example with my clients. I have clients that inspire me. So it's, it's doubly mutually beneficial to me because number one is I'm helping them achieve their goals and they're helping me sustain my lifestyle. That, that's the first mutual benefit is I'm providing them something and they're providing me something in return. There is a mutual benefit. But I have clients who, uh, I look at their lives and I'm inspired. I'm inspired by their commitment to their passion. I'm inspired by the work that they do specifically. I'm inspired by how they persevere through so many different things. There's this natural inspiration and beauty to it that lifts my spirit and I actually enjoy connecting with them. And yes, I have uh, clients that, you know, drain me, but they pay me well to drain me. And I, it doesn't take long for me to recharge. So uh, there has to be this mutual benefit. So the thing is, it's about collaboration. But here's the thing I want to share with you, and then I'm done. There is no more greater of a greater collaboration than the collaboration you should be having daily with your mind. Yes. Your mind is at the center of everything you manifest, at the center of everything you experience. It is the determining factor of how your life is moving. Uh, no, it doesn't dictate everything going on around you, but it dictates your positioning and your movement, your variances and bearings on where you're headed. And it is operating based off of some very simple principles of function. And I just want to talk to you about four principles. We're going to simplify this whole collaboration process. We're gonna break it down into four real simple truths and we're gonna get on and we're gonna break it. Uh, if you want to get this broken down uh, in a more detailed way, you can get, it's in, I believe, chapter 12 of I Am. Uh, this, it, it's, this it's what, it's, it's about what, we, chapter 12 is about what we're about to talk about now. But you have to collaborate with your mind. In other words, it's real simple. Your mind and your brain, your brain and your mind work together. Uh, we're gonna use the mind primarily to talk about what, 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 what's going on here to accomplish things in your life. Now, this is the thing, this is the beauty of it. Uh, people will talk about how complex the mind is, how complex the brain is, but you can break it down and then you can simplify it into a place where everybody can understand it and everybody can understand how it impacts one's uh, behavior, one's decision making, one's movement in life. You have four primary functional principles that govern how you interact with your mind and how your mind dictates the life that you're going to live. 
The first thing is that your mind is always going to do what it believes you want it to do, or in a better way of explaining it, what it believes is in your best interest. Your mind is always acting to do what it thinks you really need it to do. And, and, and so what does that mean? Whatever it believes to be in your best interest, it's going to do. And you say, well, okay, if that's the case, why, why is my life sucking? Why do I always make poor decisions? Why? Do, it's because you have to understand that the mind itself is neutral. It doesn't instinctively know that something is good or bad. It goes by what you have given it. And there's some things in your life that you that you that that are actually good that you've convinced your mind is bad. There are some things that are actually bad that you convinced your mind is good. And so your mind is producing for you what you've interpreted as good um, through your speech, through your imagery in your mind and your thinking and your imagination, uh, your self-talk, the vernacular you use. If it's something that you need to be doing, but say, for instance, you're trying to change your life and you need to be uh, studying. But when it ever gets time to study, you're talking about, man, I'm sick of this. Man, this sucks. Man, this is a waste of time. Man, everything that you say about, everything you say and think and image about studying is negative. You tell your mind that it's painful. And one thing that your brain is going to do, number one, is it's going to work to on your best interest. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to move you towards pleasure and away from pain. It's hardwired to do that. Your brain and your mind work together. If it's painful, it's moving you away from it. If it's uh, pleasurable, it's moving you toward it. Now, the thing is, different people uh, define pain differently. That's why you have people with these high pain thresholds. It's not that the pain isn't there. It's that they've associated something pleasurable with the pain. If I'm in the gym and I'm getting these burns, I'm going to the gym after I leave here. Uh, remember, we're on a 60 day challenge. We're burning. We're hitting, these, we're, hitting, we're hitting these goals. We have specific goals. That's something we're going to talk about uh, on another day, but we're talking about specific goals. But in the gym, you're going to get to a certain rep and it's going to start to burn. It's at the point that the burn starts, that the breakdown, which is necessary for the rebuild, starts to take place. That's where you start winning at the burn. And if you've worked out and trained or you work with a trainer or you, you, you've had, you have worked with a trainer in the past, you know that this part right here is where you're getting your work in. This is where, we're, until you get to the burn, you're just building it. it, it you, you, you're just getting that. When you get to the burn, that's when the muscles are starting to say, we're entering into a place that we're not norm, normally handling. And so it's taking more energy, more effort and starting to break the muscle down. And when you break the muscle down, because the body is an adaptive machine, it says, oh, this is what we're going to be doing. We've got to rebuild ourselves stronger to take it on next time it comes. And so what happens is you now know that the, the first three or four reps that you get out in this no big deal, that's your familiarity. That's what you're familiar with. That's, what you're, that's your norm. That, that brings no growth at all. You, but it's comfortable. You're good right there, pumping it out. Oh, but when it hits you, wait a minute, whoa. And you want to say, okay, I'm done. No, you're not done. This is where you have to get in. But how do you do that? How do you take the burn and the pain to push those next three or four reps that are really going to hurt? How do you get it out? By knowing and, and, and having a mindset, this is where I'm getting it. Boy, those pecs are going to be big. Those buys are going to be big. Those quads are going to, whatever. You're knocking it out and you're getting it. And so now, You've associated something positive and pleasurable with it. And the mind said, this is a pain. This is joy. This is elation. And it goes after it. And it leads you to it. You want that. You, you're not even happy in your workout until you start to feel it. Because you know at the moment you feel it is where it's really starting to work for you. It's the same thing. Anything you go through in life, you're going to have familiarity and uh this, this, this space of unfamiliar, being unfamiliar. It's in the unfamiliar where you grow. It's in the unfamiliar where you gain ground. But the brain is actually uh, 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 the third thing. Well, the fourth thing, I'm skipping over the third. I'll come back to the third. But the fourth thing about the brain is, is it wants to be in a familiar space. It's searching for the familiar. And how do you change that? You train it that the unfamiliar is the familiar. It's where you want to be. So basically, I tell people all the time, you have to, be un you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable if I'm comfortable. 
if you get what I'm saying. If I'm in a space and nothing is challenging me, nothing is making me feel that feeling, and all that feeling is is actually your mind saying, this is unfamiliar. You know that feeling you get when you start doing something you haven't done, and you say, man, this doesn't feel right. And you, you back off of it. Why? Because the mind is telling you this. We don't do this. But what you got to train the mind is this unfamiliar thing that you're experiencing is where we have to be. We're going to grow. We're going to be better. We're going to be sharper. We're going to raise the level of our performance because we're taking on the unfamiliar. If everything you do is comfortable, you're in the wrong space. You're being complacent. And there's no growth and no advancement in complacency. You've got to get to a point where it feels uncomfortable, where you don't mean, huh? but that's where you go get it at. So you got a brain that wants to serve you by doing what you, what it believes is in your best interest. You, you have a brain that is hardwired for pleasure. You have a brain that basically functions in two ways, imagery and words. That's number three. We, we jumped down and went to number four in your mind. But imagery and words, you, you hear me always talking about your imagination and your self-talk. You've got to create the imagery that makes the mind want to do the things that you need to do. You need to give relevance, prevalence, encouragement, and you need to shape it in a way that the mind says, this is what we got to do. You got to associate pleasure with things that you may initially find unpleasurable. And one of the most powerful ways of doing that is, 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 is a real simple statement. It says, I have chosen to do A, B, C, D. I have chosen. Then state what you've chosen. When you say I have chosen, it wasn't forced on you. You personally went out and said, this is what I'm going to do. So the brain says, nobody chooses to do something that's bad for them. Nobody chooses to do something that hurts. So it can't be pain. And then you close the statement by saying, and I will enjoy doing it. Now you've associated pleasure with it. And the brain will now find ways to get you to do it. What you have to understand is the brain functions from the subconscious state. The mind functions from the subconscious state. The subconscious state is what controls 96% of your daily functioning, behavior, decision-making. It's on autopilot. And if you get your into your mind that something is going to be done, you've chosen to do it, and it's an awesome thing, and you're going to enjoy it, your, your mind will start making ways for you to get it done. You will stop procrastinating because of fear. You will stop procrastinating because of failure. You will stop experiencing anxiety and things that you need to get done. But you've got to properly frame it in the way you talk about it. You've got to properly frame it in the way you see it and envision it in your mind. You are creating a blueprint and a map of the future through your imagination. And you are having to escape old experiences and archives in the mind in order to do it. So you're establishing new realities through new thoughts. But it's impossible to do if everything you need to do, you're talking about it negatively, you're envisioning it negatively, you're having horrible and negative anticipations and expectations associated with it. Your mind is going to find all kinds of ways, even psychosomatically. You'll sit up there and be so anxious about getting a presentation done in front of board members that the day of the board meeting, you'll wake up with the flu, literally. The body will literally create that reality for you. It won't even be the viral flu. It will be a psycho psych psychotically induced uh, mimicking of the flu that will have you feeling so bad you can't get out of bed. You'll wake up with a migraine, blurred vision. And it's all mentally, subconsciously created because you have told the mind that this thing I need to do is so horrible that it's, and I mean, stuff like this is killing me. Be careful what you say. Man, oh my God, this is killing me. Be careful. One of the most difficult times I went through in my life as far as getting things done was right after uh, I buried my, 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 my uh, great grandfather, my father. Uh, and you know, it was my mid twenties and I had experienced a lot of success uh, up until that point. Like I was on a roll, but I had taken on a negative mindset because of losing my father. I was really down. And so I had started saying things that I wasn't aware of. And 
certain, all of a sudden things that would just normally come together wasn't coming together. What would normally take an hour to get done was taking weeks. And I couldn't figure it out. So I called my mentor and I got to talking to him. And within 15 to 20 minutes of having this conversation, he says, I already can tell you what's going on. He said, I said, what? He says, it's in your internal conversation. He was saying my self-talk. He says, I've only talked to you 15, 20 minutes. And in that time, you've said at least four times, I can't win for losing. Something that simple that nobody is even going to really catch or find fault in has told your subconscious that it's not going to win. So what does it start doing? Automatically doing things that ensures that it doesn't win. That's how the brain and the mind works. That's why people who are told over and over again, children who are told over and over again by uh, what I call prominent uh, or primary label givers, parents, teachers, people in authoritative positions during the developmental years, when they're told they're stupid, when they're told they're dumb, when they're told they're, they can't achieve, if they internalize that, no matter how smart they are, they will, they will get bad grades, they will have poor conduct, they will do what it takes to align with what they believe about themselves. The subconscious does that. You have to change the narrative. You have to change the context. You got to change your vernacular, your speech, what you're saying, how you're saying it, what you're expecting. You've got to find the positive in the things you're doing and you've got to envision it at a level that you can experience it emotionally because when you can experience it emotionally, it sets the state of what to expect when you accomplish it. On that note, I'm about to get out of here. But if you haven't went over and said and, 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 and liked the uh, Master Fitness 21 uh, page, go over and like it. Uh, get ready. We're going to be doing some things. I'm going to post another picture today, uh, you know, during or after the workout at the gym. Uh, I'm two pounds, two point something pounds into achieving my goal, which is 24 pounds, actually. Uh, and so that's my goal, 24 pounds. Uh, then we're going to reevaluate, you know, when we get there and find out, okay, uh, do I want to put more uh, muscle on or do I want to stay exactly there or do I want to drop even more? We're going to find out what works best for me and we're going to find out what works best for you. If you want to work in a one-on-one -on -one capacity with either myself or my son, reach out. This is the thing. Uh, I'm going to get my son on and introduce you to him. I'm so proud of this kid. This kid is so driven. And, and you know, it, it definitely doesn't help the pride when he's doing what something you've been doing all your life. So anyway, let's make some things happen. I'm about to jump off of here. When I get off of here, I'm headed to the gym. And I'm going to be back on here talking to you. We're riding hard from here until 2020 to get some things done. If you know somebody that wants to get something done on any level, this is the place to come. We're going to get through it. If it's not something I specialize in, I guarantee you I know somebody who does. Let's make this happen. Let's not wait till uh, December 31st kicks in and you come in half drunk the next day with some New Year's resolutions that you're not going to stick with. Why? Because you haven't developed the capacity to perpetuate them because it's not about willpower. It's about what you've programmed yourself to do. We're talking about riding hard and it's going to be a program that's built day by day. By the time we get to December 31st, we're going to be on autopilot and achieving the things that really matter to us. We're going to go into 2020 to win. That's the goal. Who's riding with me? That's what I want to know. On that note, I'm out of here.